Hey everyone, welcome to the new lesson. Today we're going to be talking about some pretty cool features in the Linux shell, which is actually originally a Unix shell. There are two shell features that make the shell incredibly powerful. So the concepts we're going to be talking about in this lesson are pipes and input and output redirection. So pipes are really simple. Basically you call some program, so we'll call it program one and we'll do pipe program two. Neither of these programs exist. This is just like an example of how the syntax would look. What does this do now? Well, program one has some input and output and the pipe, this one here, which is, you'll, you if you can't find it, it's above the enter key. So it takes the output of program one and it feeds it into program two as the input, which brings us to the other thing we mentioned is input and output redirection itself and how that works and how this ties into grepping and pipes and everything else that's cool. So now we could type in an, a program called echo and all echo does is it repeats what you put into the quotations here. So we can do like gorilla zo because echo is a song by him, like a really old song. I don't know why I just thought about that, but Echo, Gorilla Zo. So that's the output. See, now you're typing in, this is like the input into this command, into this program, and then this is like the output that it's giving you. So the input part of this would be echo, this is the input. The, the text I am typing into the shell is all input. And when I press enter, that is output. So there's different inputs and outputs that you could do. There, You could do a file as an input and then the output could go into a file or the output could go into a network or the output could go into an error log and reverse too. You can have a network being the input into a file or into a network or a network being the input to to a log or you know it could be a lot of different things. And this is something that we're gonna be covering soon. But now if I do echo standard output, this is standard output. What the thing that you're seeing in the shell, this in the shell right here, that's standard output. But if I did echo, okay. If I did LS, let's say, as you know, this is list. This is error output. This means that this is not the output that you want the Linux kernel or the shell to be giving back to you. That's just the output that it's giving you automatically because this is an error, something's not working. So now we know what standard in is, and that's what you're typing. Now we know what standard out is, that's what's coming back. Now we know what standard error is, or sorry, error output is. And that's the output of whenever the system or the shed. That's whenever the shell doesn't know what you're talking about. So it's giving you an error. Now there's little numbers for each of them. So we have standard in. And standard input is 1. We can do standard output is so now that we know the three different input and outputs we can now give them a number to represent one another so standard in put is zero as the first one because computers the first of something is normally not number one, it's a zero, because zero is like the first number. And the second one, standard output, is number one. Then we have error output, which is number, number two, which is the third one. So, 
these three input and outputs are channels in the Linux kernel. And these channels all have different numbers that correspond to them. Standard input is 0, standard output is 1, and error output is 2. So let's try our first standard in into a standard out. Okay, so we'll do, first of all, where are we? Print working directory. What do we have? Let's go to the desktop. So cd desktop, because we're going to be making a new file here. And that file will be called, you might be able to hear some sirens in the background, so I'm going to type in siren file dot txt. So that's our new file right there. And then we're going to do echo, put this into siren file. Obviously that's not going to work just like that. So if you want to put this into the siren file, we'll do put this into siren file. Now this is the command. And now we can do one because one utilizes the standard output channel, which is number one. And then the greater than, because it's pointing to where we're outputting it to. And then we could do siren file.txt. So if we do ls, we can do cat siren file to check the contents. And as we can see, we put this into siren file. But now, here's the interesting part. If I want to put something else in the file, I could do put extra lines in the file. And I could do and let's cat it again. And whoa, okay. So as we can see this line is no longer in our file, only this line is. So we actually overwrote the file with a new one. So what if we want to add extra lines in our file without overwriting it? Well, this is how you overwrite contents in your file. You do this one for output and put in the greater than bracket then go siren file.txt and we go cat siren file this is how you overwrite contents in your file if we want to add contents to our file then we could go echo this is how you add an extra line without overwriting is writing with two T's or one T? I don't know. <laughs> we're we're going to do an English course next so that I know how to write spell properly. But, um, okay, this is how you add an extra line without overwriting contents in a file. And then we would do one, two of these. Sirenfile.txt and then we can go cat siren file and here we have added our new line into the file without overwriting what was already in the file and by default you don't even have to write the one in front of the greater than symbol you can just do like this you can add to the file like this without putting the one, you can just do this and then it's like automatically implying that the one is already there. If you're just doing this, it's like implicit, I guess you can call it. So if you cat that, then you can add extra lines like this, or you can do, we can overwrite everything like this and we could do the one and then greater than, or we could just do greater than by itself, and then it implicitly thinks that 
we're already putting the one in front of it. So if we do that, then we can see that we overwrote everything in our file. And one way to... Let's talk about another way to create a file. Instead of editing a file, we can even just do echo create a new file with this text already contained within the file. Alright, and then we could do put that into a new file.txt. And if we go ls, we can see that we have created a new file. And if we concatenate that, we can see that we added this output into the new file that we just created by doing this command. So, we can do a list to see our files, and then we could do list dash all long form and human readable. And we own we could do this like this, but I only want to see one file, and that's gonna be the siren file.txt. So on, let's let's uh, clear this up a little bit. So it's only gonna show me the one file that I specified. See, this is our standard input, and this is our standard output of that command on the shell. But now this is the cool part. If I write this command and I do and I do the greater than sign like this, and I type in siren file.txt, if I now concatenate it. Now our file contains the output of what this command gives you. So if you write this command, it's not going to give this output into the shell, but it's going to put the output into this file. And as you can see, because we used only one greater than symbol, we overwrote all the contents in this file with that. And if you don't want to do that, then all you have to do is go two greater than symbols. And now if we concatenate it, we get two of these. And take note here, the first one is zero, and the second one is 64. And that's the amount of bits in the file. So when we wrote the first command at 624 PM, it had zero bits in the file. But when we wrote it again, at 624 p.m. it had 64 bits in the file and I bet if we did it one more time it will have 128 bits. Let's try it. Oh 129 bits look at that okay so that's pretty cool but now what if we were to do this ls alh a file that doesn't exist to siren file text And notice that I'm using the greater than, so it should overwrite it, right? I'll hit enter. And, whoa, I get an output. And if I go concatenate, there's nothing in the... F whoa, I just deleted everything in the file. So all of these records are gone. So what happened here? Well, first of all, we're overwriting something. And it wasn't able to put any kind of output into this file because this is not a standard output. This is an error output. So it's not going to put this into the file by default. So in this scenario, we could specify that we want that error output to go into the file. And for that, instead of writing 1, which is the implicit, the default, we can do 2. So now if we go concatenate, it's putting that error message in there because we told it to. But by default, it treats number two outputs, the error outputs, as different kinds of outputs. So it treats it different. Okay, so just a quick recap. It's process, whatever the process is, that could be either ls or cat or print working directory or anything. Program and then we go greater than to the output which 
this can create a file or overwrite a file and then program with two that is it can create a file while putting it in putting your contents in there or it can append or add to a file without overwriting existing contents all right so let's talk about emails because this ties into it we can go echo this is an email and we'll add this or create a new file and overwrite into email.txt we go ls to make sure it's there and we can see our output has created a new file and put this into that new file and put this our standard input into our email.txt as a standard output and implicitly it was using the number one channel for standard input and now if we're trying to send an email we could send it using email.txt as the shortcut kind of and it will send whatever's inside of it now in real life this might have been automatically created into maybe an input into a log file or like an error file or maybe some kind of monitoring things and you want to email that file to maybe like your senior systems administrator or put it onto a ticket like as an attachment so you can kind of show what's going on in the systems well one way you could send it is just typing in mail dash s and dash s is subject and if we don't know what that is if we if we forget what that is then we can just type in man mail. The mailman, man mail. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we can see subject, we can see a lot of other stuff, attach, append. Again, if you forget anything, you can always come back here. We don't need to memorize everything, right? So okay, right. Mail dash s for subject, and we could do, you know, subject line topic of email and then after the quotations we're going to specify who we want to send this to so this would be oxymonster for me because that's my username in this network but you know if you had a network like ubergames.com backslash username then you could send it to that person but we're just going to do oxymonster for this example and then we could do the less than symbol. See, we have greater than, which is output, and overwrite. Then we have two greater thans for append and not overwrite. But then we have less than, which is not output, but it's going to be input into, into this. So, so here we are specifying what, what, is, what we're outputting into OxyMonster, into this email. So we want to send this email to OxyMonster using this command, which is just uh, gives a subject line and it mails it to us. So hit enter and bam. And then here we type in mail and we've got two new messages actually. Wow, I've got two. Me I have one message from May 18th and I have one message from today. And this is... And this is the email that I just received. So if I type in the two, PS. PS is for process. And it's, this is to show us processes that may or may not be running. And then with PS, there's also different options. You know, if we type in man PS, then we get all sorts of different things. And here we're going to be using these to see every process on the system. We could do process. AXU or e AUX. So PS, AUX, and all three of these letters do something different. So the A stands for I want to see all my processes. U stands for user, so it converts user IDs into user names, so it's easier to read. And X is showing us processes that aren't attached to a terminal. So, you know, just further enhancing that it's going to show us all processes. And here, if we type in this command, it gives us 
a lot of information, a lot of processes, as you can see. This is a lot of stuff to read through. So let's go ahead and clear that screen so we don't have to look at that monstrosity and go PS aux. And this is where the pipe comes in that we were talking about earlier on in this video. So how does pipe come into play? Well, as you saw, that was the output. So we, this is our standard input. And if I hit enter, as you saw, that was a standard output. If we go greater than symbol and put it into process.txt, it puts it into that file and we can do like cat process.txt and that shows the process this shows everything that was put into that file and there's also a head process.txt which shows us like the first 10 lines then there's tail process.txt which shows us the last 10 lines right okay so what if we only want to know one thing on this so we see this part here, mail. Mail is a process, okay? So we could do PS, AUX, and then pipe. Then we'll get a command called grep, and grep is essentially like a search or like a grab process, and we could even do man grep to see more about it. So grep, it searches for patterns in each files. So it's basically a, a search engine. So, and of course there's different functions, there's different ways that you can use it. There's output commands, there's... Looks like there's a lot of stuff about grep, and I don't even know... I don't even know like 80% of this stuff, but... Okay, cool. So, PS, AUX, pipe, grep. And we're going to do mail to look for this. So now it shows us all the processes that run with, with mail. And as you can see, it shows us two processes. And the reason why it's showing two and not one is because this top process right here that I'm highlighting, this is the mail process that is running in this Linux kernel. This process is not the mail server and it has nothing to do with mail. This process is showing the process that we just ran to give us the search process, if that makes sense. So when I'm running a command, every time you run any command, every time you press this enter button, every time I'm pressing this enter button, I create a new process, okay? So when I do PS AUX man PS oops wrong command PS AUX grep man PS then okay I, I thought it would show up this random thing right here but okay let's try bash PS AUX grep bash so same thing right the first one is bash it's running and the second one is the process that was created in order to put this output into the shell. And then another one we could do is PSAUX less. And this is just showing, it's still showing all the things that we need to see, but you just hold down enter to see more. And you can just hold down controls Z to get out of that screen. So, okay, that, this brings us to the end of the lesson. And I want you to play around with this. Go and try searching for some commands. Try out the grep commands. Try out, you know, create some new files. Put out the output. So you can do ps aux grep mail. And then output this file into our random file name.txt. And then, you know, we can cat that to random file name. See what our output is kind of explore around a bit more, practice these skills, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Thanks for watching.